Welcome back. Now, students at Mary Hill Girls High School Science Club in Barara, Uganda, have designed a self-monitored car. They plan to use the pro prototype to entice potential investors for funding. The robotic car is generating a buzz in Uganda, as viewers Paul Ndio reports. Like countries in sub-Saharan Africa, Uganda has its share of road accidents. A fast-growing population and rapid development means more cars on the road and more mishaps. Unpredictable traffic is the way of life here. But all that could change if a group of young students from Mary Hill High School in western Uganda have their way. These young girls have come up with innovative ways to save lives by designing a robotic car that has sensors that automatically stop you from speeding. We consider this to be the normal speed of the vehicle. That's the speed you want the vehicle to be driven at. If the speed is beyond the normal now, that's when it sends the call, the, the message, and even probably calls you. The real idea is if you fail to respond, then it can, you can divert it to somebody. If my vehicle calls and I fail to respond, means maybe I'm not with my phone, then it can be diverted to somebody else. The person you want, you can even divert it to police. They've designed their very own version of the electric car. We programmed a robot to do very many different functions and it has the following features. First of all, it has an automatic seat belt and it works in this way when someone sits and leans backwards. The, the, seat, the, um, the seat belt will come down automatically after five seconds. And when it comes down, the person is, is prompted to put it in. When the person is leaving the seat and the person mm, uh, tries to unlean from the back part of the seat, the seat belt will automatically come up. The students have now set their eyes on increasing the number of safety features to include an automatic driving light control system. The next is an automatic driving light controller. It's this one here. You see most of the people in our country are being affected by the heavy lights, the full lights, or even sometimes by the sun. So we came up with this. When the light intensity increases, we had the glass here. So when the light intensity increases beyond what the driver can contain, it would sense that the light has increased beyond the normal intensity and this one would come down autom automatically. But then if the light intensity now reduces to what the driver can contain, it would come back up. The self-monitored car was assembled by a team of students uh, supervised by one of Uganda's leading innovation and technology teachers, uh, Nicholas Kajova. He says the robotic car is connected uh, to devices that sense abnormal speed. Yeah, when, for example, if it runs, when it reaches me here, it stops. It doesn't knock me because of that sensor in the front. The project is funded mostly by the school to encourage students in the science department to dream big. Again, Sandra is one of those students. This, this is the touch sensor and this is the, the main brain of our, our car and it is the... NXT brick, we have different motors. These are the motors that we're using. These are the, the, they control the movements of the car. We also have the ultrasonic sensor. This is the ultrasonic sensor. Then these are the cables, the, the data cables. The self-monitored car is still under construction because the students want to make major improvements on the prototype before they can take it on a serious road test. But in the meantime, these young girls already have their sights set on expanding the brand. Well, Paul Ondio joins us now with more on the robotic car project. Hello, Paul. Hey, Vincent. It's good, good to be you. back here. And now, in a word, what inspired these kids to work on this kind of project? Well, it was a combination of so many things. First of all, it was a, a, a challenge. They asked them to come up with solutions for their own problems. And uh, they, were, they came up uh, with an idea of uh, safety, uh, let's say having safety belts, uh, having uh, cars, uh, a, a light-controlled switch where you can actually monitor the light intensity of the car. So it was one of those projects that uh, it was given to them as a challenge, and they managed to come up with that. 
Now, across Africa, there is almost like an explosion of creativity and innovativeness from what you observed and what they told you. How much interest is this uh, attracting, especially from governments and even the private sector? Well, there are a couple of initiatives that have been put in place uh, by several governments. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, Uganda has a couple of initiatives that are, are targeting the ITC industry. And uh, uh, in incredibly, uh, there are so many kids who are also trying to venture into this, uh, this IT business because they are not waiting for the government to come up with the solutions for their own problems. So what kids are doing, they are going out there researching, they are on the computers with access to internet, they are on computers trying to see what is it that I can do to make a difference. And that's how some of these kids are coming up with uh, these incredible products. Sometimes uh, colleges, universities kind of take interest in what kids are doing in high school. I've seen it in Washington. Did you get to know of any such overtures from like Makere University? Yes, I went to Makere University and I met actually with a group of uh, very, very uh, inspiring students. Uh, I met up with a group, the Mozilla team, they're also working on a couple of challenges. Uh, Mozilla Firefox has given them these challenges to develop apps that can eventually work for their own campuses. I also talked to other kids who have designed uh, a malaria uh, application that can detect malaria. Uh, so I was like, wow, amazed. And there are other kids that I talked to who, are, who have designed an app where that, let's say you're stuck in traffic, it will tell you which routes to take. So in a way, it works like a GPS. Well, Paul, mm. thank you very much. We expect much more from you from your trip to Uganda. Thanks for being well, with us. Well, thanks for having me, finally having me on your show. <laughs> Great.